We all have different passions and talents, but I think you'd agree that most of us want to do our best with whatever it is that we do put our time and effort into. And if the goal is to be better or even the best in what you do, my next guest says mental strength can help you get there. So today's strategies to improve your mental strength and your performance. Joining me is Dr. Craig Manning, a professor of performance psychology at Brigham Young University and the author of the book, The Fearless Mind. And you have talked a lot about um, helping athletes, you help business professionals, you help even artists, right. but can these strategies help kind of the everyday person? Yeah, absolutely, the mind really is at the core of everything we do. So um, as we get the mind right, health is better, performance is better, and yeah, everyone always wants me to kind of pick one of the fields, but I, every time I try to focus on one, there's somebody from a different area that's wanting help, so yeah. But that's, that's pretty encouraging for the rest of us little people out there because <laughs> I think, okay, this is beneficial to everyone. Yeah. So how have you tapped into this mental strain? Yeah, I just, uh, I was a tennis player, grew up in Australia, and played pro for a little while, but uh, didn't do as well as I wanted, and I started trying to figure out what it was, and, and as I was trying to figure it out, I realized there's a lot of mental skills you can acquire to really accelerate your performance, and, and that's been a lifelong pursuit ever since, so. Yeah. It's so true, you, you think that mental state really is tied to athleticism, yeah. but also these other things like business yeah. and art. Yeah. So walk us through, you have a few steps that you say can kind of help us all up our game, yeah. whatever our game is. Yeah. Walk us through those. You say one of the things that we can do is have a can-do mindset, like yeah, really been, not focusing on the negative. Been studying this for a long time and there's a pattern there with high-performing people, whether in athletics, business, music, or just everyday life. And I really feel like the first one is self-belief. We gotta have that deep belief in our ourselves first before we even try to do anything a lot of the time because the opposite of self-belief is self-doubt and once you let that doubt in we don't even really put effort in we already check out mentally we could still physically be turning up to work or the tennis court or whatever but we're not mentally there and so the first skill I like to call is it can do because self-belief is great but that's theory how do you actually do it and that, that's my passion and so the self-belief I found that people that have that can-do mindset. They're always processing solutions, not processing what not to do. And even breaking that down a step further is having a positive self-talk. So always talking to yourself in a proactive, positive way, Am amazing what happens when you get people thinking that way. So you're saying that one of the first strategies we can use to kick it out, because I think you're absolutely right, a lot of times we hear, be positive about yourself, yeah. but how do you, act, you know, yep. if these thoughts are coming and you're kind of right. hearing them over and over again in your head, one thing you can do is actually actively say the words. Yeah. Well, most people don't realize the mind really is, is ours, that conscious mind. We have so many thoughts that we allow into our mind that are not ours or that are negative, and we, we need to own that space and to control it, and as you control it, you're in control of your performance, whether it's singing or whether it's in business or any area, and we can dramatically increase people's performance as we get them thinking the right way. So how do you know if you're putting in effort will get the best results? I mean, once you've kind of mastered this mm -hmm. negative self-talk, right. how do you know that you'll get good results? So yeah, no matter what industry, as you get that down, you can see how much faster you process. So in athletics, you can already see it's win-loss. You can see that your performance goes up. In business, we just track productivity and track profitability there. Um, so as soon as you're getting that thought process, it's really all the anxiety is kind of falling away and you're solving problems and, and most of the interference is gone and you're just performing freer. Yeah. And it is, it is human nature to kind of focus on the mistakes. Yeah. But you say that you really have to focus on the positive, and that kind of rings yeah. true with the first step that you brought up. And I love how you say that. It, it's human nature, and we use that language because we've trained our human nature to be that way. It, we're not born that way, but we train ourselves to, to focus on what not to do, and, and that keeps perpetuating one generation after another, keeps perpetuating these mental habits. We really didn't understand the mind until about 30 years ago. For In the business world, we literally have called it the black box for hundreds of years. Because the we mind. couldn't see You're it. You're calling right. the mind the black box. Right. Because uh -huh. we didn't actually see what was going on in there until about 30 years ago. We finally had the technology to, to actually see the thought patterns and and it's unbelievable what we're learning now and what we're being able to do in, in every area as we, as we understand this. So it's really fun, I love it. And what, what is the, what's the danger of focusing on the bad things? 
Because as we focus on the bad things, then that gets in our subconscious and creates a habit. It habitualizes. And once it's in the subconscious, that memory or that bad habit is there permanently. And it can undermine us tremendously depending on, on the depth of that. I mean, this is on spectrum, obviously. We probably all have some negative thought patterns. But there's also others that really develop some really deep-seated thought patterns that can really undermine any area of their life. Yeah, and that's and the danger. You say some of these things can really help with addiction in yes, particular. Yes. So give me an example. How could this help with addiction? Or what's yeah, the type so of that you've seen that help? I was, uh, I mean, I was focused in athletics. I was in business. I was doing these other things. And then people, some friends started coming and talking to me about some of the addiction things. And one day I was just realizing these are good people. I don't really like it when we say it's a disease or I hate the idea that we don't have control over something. You know, obviously there's a time and a place to take medication, but, but I really believe even if we are on medication to work on skills so we can be in control, because if we're not in control, anxiety goes up. So I had the, I had the thought one day that uh, these people are good people. They really don't have a disease. They're just trying to be high performing. But to be high performing, you have to acquire skills, right? When you think, if I want to do this, I've got to work on skills to get there. And, and that's really my expertise and what I do. So I started applying some of the journal and the techniques I had. Instead of focusing on, say, pornography, let's focus on being mentally healthy. And I was blown away by the results. Just incredible. Instead of constantly perpetuating and reinforcing the mental Ill habit, we started focusing on the health or the high performance, and it's been overwhelming. And you with, have a good point. I think, yeah. you know, when your mind is occupied with something positive, you don't maybe have the space to do some of these negative yeah, things. Exactly. Where can people find more about this? Um, I'm doing a course, actually. I started doing a course because I was running all over the place at nights trying to help people, and my wife's like, when are you going to put this into a one hour <laughs> time frame? Yeah. yeah. And so uh, I'm doing a course, an eight week course. I really feel like a course is important because a one off isn't going to get the skill down. You know, it's that's a hit and miss. And so I'm doing an eight week course. It's on people can sign up on Eventbrite if they just go to addiction recovery or the fearless mind. They'll be able to find it on Eventbrite. Perfect. So. Thanks, Dr. Manning. Thanks. Appreciate it.